the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Ungrateful people, we thank you. All who are connected with us, to us around following us online join us to lift our voices and tell him thank you Jesus we bless you Jesus we acknowledge you as a doer of all things working by your spirit you only use men but it never comes from men. We acknowledge you before the entire world and we declare that you are the wisdom behind the results that we command. You are the Lord of the outcomes. You are the Lord of every good thing that we celebrate in this ministry. So Lord, we thank you. the Lord now we are to start a series on the Holy Spirit but that will be next week I in the course of the week I had a very serious burden we're still going to be on the series but we just shift it one week and um, I think that there is a lot we need to learn about the ministry of the Holy Spirit the person of the Holy Spirit and how to walk in the anointing it's not enough to just half the spirit of God we must know how to be demonstrators of that power but God had put something very strong in my heart and um, I trust God that will be as brief as possible tonight so that we can pray um, for me when it came it was very very serious and I think that is worth considering we are going to be praying I'm teaching tonight on dominion over curses. Dominion over curses. Dominion over curses. Thank you, Jesus. Dominion over curses. any aspect of the kingdom life that you do not have sufficient understanding of please listen carefully you will always experience the reign of darkness in that area the bible calls part of the cadres of the demonic kingdom there is a class of spirits called the rulers of darkness that means their dominion is on the strength of the absence of light or an inaccurate understanding on how to apply that light you know misunderstanding and ignorance are the same thing in the realm of the spirit one who is a possessor of light but cannot apply it adequately and one who is barren of that light both of them are destined to have the same outcome so it's not enough to be possessors of light we must also be possessors of understanding the system in the kingdom by which we apply this truth you will be learning a lot this night and i trust that god will open our eyes in the name of jesus in the course of this very brief teaching tonight god is going to be opening our eyes and we're going to be seeing a lot of things as it concerns our lives our families our destinies but much more than the knowledge 
God will hand to us the keys that will not only help us to rise above it but help the people in our families to rise above it praise the Lord if I look at the baby that Shalhoma is holding and I call that baby an adult I can argue based on whatever scientific fact I can choose to even say she's not holding a baby whether I decide based on my perception to assume she's not holding a baby or not the truth remains the truth are you getting what I'm saying the Bible says for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth there are certain realities as far as our work with God and our work in the kingdom is concerned that if we do not pay attention to and sustain the grace to be able to bring those things under the feet of Jesus we will live absolutely defeated lives and one of it is what I'm going to be teaching you tonight dominion over curses lamentations chapter 5 verse 7 very interesting scripture please give us that scripture lamentations chapter 5 verse 7 i want us to read it as loud and clear if you are a child of god ready one to read one more time stop what does it mean and they are not they are what that means they have left the scene something started with them and their presence departed from the scene but whatever that something is the bible says and we have done what the word born there is the word inherited our fathers have seen and are not it was only fair that whatever trouble will go with them but the bible says we have borne their iniquity i hope you know the bible says all scripture was inspired of the holy ghost holy men wrote right as they were moved by the spirit the second scripture i want us to look at is proverbs 26 verse 2 and then we'll begin to establish a few things Proverbs 26 verse 2. I want us to read one to read. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying. Read please. So the cause, causeless. <laughs> look, look at this. This, this. I'm already laughing because I don't know how many of you went to school, but I think that this was written in basic English so the cause causeless shall not come in other words if it comes there is a cause the condition for it not being there is that nothing caused it that means the presence of any kind of predicament is a sign that it was intentionally initiated the bible says there is a law and this is the law that the a cause causeless shall not come it didn't say shall not stand it will never even manifest in the first place so the fact that it was able to appear in the scene of your destiny regardless of what caused it this law was properly obeyed for it to find expression it says a cause causeless shall not stand it shall not come there are so many believers who do not understand the laws of the kingdom and the systems of God like we have been discussing here. This is part of accessing spiritual intelligence. And um, we confess so many things we do not understand in the body of Christ and we are largely victims of situations and circumstances. There are so many people who do not even believe that there is such a phenomenon in the dealings of men in the earth called a system 
where men can experience what the Bible calls a cause. The word sounds insulting. The word sounds antichrist. The word sounds degrading. But it's interesting to know that the first person who used it in the Bible was God. <laughs> the first person to reveal to us that there is a possibility that a man's life can be programmed to experience woes was not even Satan. It was God. Almighty. Now think about this. God himself is using something. Are we believers? Ah, look at you looking at me as if you left your Bible one year ago. Is it not in your Bible? When man fell, the Bible says, and the Lord God had the voice. I mean, and they had the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day, correct? And he came and said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? Then he said, the woman. This madam you have kept close to me did this and that and that and because of her I got into trouble. Woman, what is this that you have done? She said the serpent. And he turned to the serpent and the Bible clearly, clearly tells us number one, the serpent was cursed. That he would crawl on his belly and he shall feed upon the dust of the earth. Correct? Correct? Then God turned to the woman and made another pronouncement of pain in childbirth. Then God turned to the earth, innocent earth, and said, Cursed are you for the sake of the man. Thorns and thistles shall begin to come out and in the sweat of thy brow. That's the mystery of hardship. God, using that same statement, the second experience was with a man called Cain. When Cain killed his brother, and then God called on Cain, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? And God said that the blood of the brother crieth from the earth. And then he cursed Cain. Correct? And when he listed those curses, a fugitive and a vagabond shall you be? And Cain turned and even negotiated. Remember in one of our teachings we explained that. And he said, no, 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 no. Whoever sees me, whoever sees me, whether he has no business killing me or not, something upon me will force him to want to kill me. And God said, all right, I will put a mark. Without that mark, anyone can kill you. So it's not about who kills. It's about what is making them want to kill you. Listen carefully. Please follow me tonight. You are going to learn a lot. A cause causeless shall not stand it's like saying every time you see water in this bottle it was intentionally put it cannot just appear write this down what is a cause ah looked around and suddenly realized that you've been so good to me Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. Who am I that you are mindful of? Who am I that you hear my cry when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of? Yeah. Who am I? You're the source of my strength, not you. The strength of my life, not you. My hope and my joy, not you. My confidence, not you. You're the source of my strength, not you. The strength of my life, are you? My hope and my joy, are you? My confidence, are you? Oh, 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 oh,
causes number one a cause is a mystery a cause is a mystery that means the operation of a cause cannot be studied intellectually you must be able to study from the standpoint of the realm of the spirit a cause is a mystery The second thing I want you to know about a cause is that a cause is a spiritual force. A cause, listen carefully, is a spiritual force. A cause is a spiritual force. Are we together? Number three, a cause has magnetic characteristics like you talk in magnetism an attracting power it can attract certain things to its victim i'm taking out time to help you understand this let's take it very carefully tonight a cause is a mystery a cause is a spiritual force Then a cause is magnetic. It has an attracting power. Number four. A cause is always negative in its manifestation. A cause is always negative in its manifestation. There's no such thing as positive cause. No. What is a cause? A cause is an invocation. A cause is an invocation. Comma. A programming. A cause is an invocation. A programming. That is designed. To attract woes and calamities to the life of its victim. A cause is a what? An invocation, a programming that is designed to attract woes and calamities. Pay attention and listen carefully. In the life of its victim it always has negative effects on the life of its victim a cause can be made manifest in the life of a person through utterances let's be very fast utterances and pronouncements utterances and pronouncements the bible did not leave us in the dark as to the fact that utterances and pronouncements have prophetic implications whether from the positive dimension or the negative dimension every time an utterance is made the bible tells us it has an effect that is supported from the realm of the spirit that every time i open my mouth to utter an utterance the Bible tells us whether it was done in ignorance or it was done intelligently that there is a support system in the realm of the spirit that helps to back the outcome of that pronouncement. So the Bible says, say not before an angel, I made a mistake. Causes can find expression through written words. This is largely seen in not much of this is understood in christianity but when you study world religions you find out that there are many religions that um work like a legal system they have from slates to books to mantras to manuals and all kinds of things and all of these gadgets and these documents are a system and whenever they are invoked in a certain dimension and a manner they have capacity
to program wars upon the life of the people. These are the basic ways that the Bible reveals to us that a cause can be communicated to an individual. Now, very quickly, what is the character of a cause? I'm being very, I'm, I'm talking tonight like a lecturer because I want us to pray and I really want everybody to understand this. It is easy to know that a territory, listen carefully, maybe let me change the word and call it a siege. Let me change the word and call it woes so that it will psychologically relate to you. But the name is a cause. If I change the name, it's only for your comfort, not to change the reality. It is called a cause. Are we together? Our idea of a cause is someone who offends you, then you make a pronouncement in anger and it brings a cause. No, no. It is that idea that makes us feel guilty. Say, no, 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 I didn't offend anybody. No. In this world, once you are alive, you have to find out what happened before you. Because you can be a victim of a story that predates your existence. Are we together now? It is easy to know that a personality, a family, a territory is under a cause. The first indication of the presence of a cause in a life and a family is patterns. Repetition of negative patterns that seem to veto the individual's prayer life that seem to veto the individual's supposed spiritual activities please pay attention patterns patterns the classic indication of curses and blessings in the bible is patterns patterns the same way the same way you can know that a man, a place, an individual is blessed. There is a track record of frequent happenings regardless of the condition. Are we together? Yeah. So we look at the life of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the Israel of God, and we see a pattern. Everyone who spoke against them was judged by God. There was something upon them. Every time they violated his dictates, they were given to their enemies. It was a pattern. Patterns are very common in the lives of people. Now, we just pretend that they are not there. You see, let me tell you something. One of the major reasons why people do not rise in power and faith, listen carefully, is because of insincerity. When you want to approach spiritual things, you must be open-hearted and sincere. Are we together? Your heart must be broken and contrite. This pattern ranges from all kinds and it happens everywhere. There are patterns as far as finances are concerned. There are patterns as far as family lives are concerned. You turn and look around the average family in Africa and you will know that there are patterns now pay attention and follow me to the end of the lecture don't be quick to just say no 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 but it doesn't exist i think i did something about it a cause causeless if it still remains the cause is there a cause causeless a cause causeless if i have a boil in my hand and i go to doctor if i come to you and i have a boil in my hand you will tell me that this boil is a reaction it's an effect of something is that true the boil is showing that something is wrong so the cause is not the failure the failure is a message the patterns are a message they are not the cause the cause is spiritual the cause is an atmosphere it's like a cloud. It's like a mantle that an individual can carry. Has capacity to break barriers. Has capacity to follow you. It can pursue a man. It can overtake a man. The Bible personifies a cause. 
in Deuteronomy 28, you see that he spoke to them a list of blessings and then causes. He said it will pursue you and overtake you. Travel to London, travel to UK, travel to your village, go to school, marry, be wherever it can follow you. It has that capacity, that limitless ability, a quality only given to spiritual things. A cause is not failure. A cause is not barrenness. A cause is not retrogression. All those things are messages. They are symbols that signify the presence of such an atmosphere upon a man. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? <laughs> Joshua chapter 7. Let's look at it very quickly. Something interesting happened there. We'll read verse 1, then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. Joshua chapter 7 verse 1 and then we'll jump to verse 10 to 12. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan the son of Kami, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah took of what? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against who? Who carried something? God was angry against help me now I, there's a revelation i want to show you who participated in the loot help me did they loot as a congregation did he consult them to loot the bible says he smuggled an item that he was prohibited to carry correct and then what happened the anger of the lord was kindled against who verse 10 and the lord said unto joshua get thee up wherefore liest thou toss upon thy face because they were defeated a small city defeated them and joshua went to god israel had who sinned it never said achan had sinned we are bible students it never said achan had sinned he said israel had sinned and they have transgressed my covenant which i commanded them for they have even they they, they, they have even taken of their costing and have also stolen and dissembled also and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 12. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies but turned their backs before their enemies. Why? They started by taking something accost and in verse 12, they themselves were one man whose eyes saw something and he said no i can't let this thing go like that and he smuggled it quietly and put it in his pocket and god was watching and god said israel you have seen and all of them think of the innocent people that died in the war they were all preparing oh god will give us i mean if god gave us jericho what is ai a small town and in their midst someone smuggled an item and all of a sudden they went to battlefield imagine them moving warriors and they were utterly defeated and joshua the embarrassment was too much and he went back to god crying and god said stand up please this is not the issue of prayer you need to understand i need to give you understanding don't just lie down crying for nothing he said israel has seen they took something and by this time he said they themselves were a cause he said neither will i be with you anymore except he destroyed the accursed from among you the accursed was no longer a thing but a person accursed is real i wish they were not i would have just told you i was joking let's be serious now accursed is real don't you see them in your family i know you act like they are not there don't you see them around listen carefully don't you see them in the life of pastors don't you see them in the life of apostles, prophets, great people? A curse does not mean you are a sinner. Write it down. You have to get this. A sinner like one possessing the name. Listen, listen. I want to teach you something. Just pay attention. Whatever you don't understand, just keep following. A curse is not necessarily a symbol that an individual personally sinned against God. There are many families 
there are many individuals carrying things in their lives that they can laugh around and pretend in church that this thing does not exist it doesn't happen but we are watching with our eyes remember the bible says a cause causeless shall not come meaning if it comes don't just probe the effect what is the cause back to my boil example so i have a boil and my hand is swollen and i run to the doctor and say doctor help me and the doctor looks at it and smiles and says ah your white blood cells are fighting something are we together now they are fighting something or um what they call this thing fever sign ah pastor jt good to see you i didn't realize it was him hallelujah and then fever sign and then he tells me that that fever sign is a sign that there's war somewhere when others are feeling cold you are feeling hot correct you try to stand in the sun you start feeling cold again you don't know what is wrong with you that reaction is a sign that a war is going on somewhere whoever wins you will soon know if you don't recover it's a sign you are not winning and that means you must seek assistance and the doctor will say okay i need to introduce something in your life and then he introduces something and all of a sudden things start changing and you cannot enter your body to know whether you are winning so you use the absence of that evidence as a sign that you are recovering all of a sudden listen a boil that refused to go you put rub it refused to go you put local herbs are we together palm oil it refused to go immediately you know something is wrong this is not sometimes it can even mock you and go and come out or come out somewhere else the boy is saying it doesn't matter where i come out i can come out anywhere for as long as what is causing it is still there but when the doctor explains to you the issue is not the boil the issue is and sometimes he will not even ask you to bust it he introduces something to your system then a boil causeless starts drying you watch it dry and it disappears and within a week you never believe anything is there then you now confirm by the absence of that thing that it is gone so don't sit down and tell me no boil is swelling we are all watching it grow you say no boil we are seeing it we are not stupid a cause causeless shall not stand you may not appreciate this because somebody is paying your bills now you may not appreciate this because no matter how careless you are you don't sow but somebody's harvest is paying for you so you are thinking you are the one sowing a day will come you will be exposed to a reality where you will now see that your life is dependent on the outcome of your understanding there are patterns that should not happen to believers if they are happening something should be dealt with it should not be ignored it should be understood and dealt with brothers and sisters hear me i tell you the truth by the authority of the lord jesus christ causes are real yes they are yes they are there are families today that all the men in that family never move forward they never rise they never become anything Ejimi, the men do not have to be irresponsible they are sincere people very sincere people there are families where every month per year somebody must die regardless of how sincere they are loving people it can even be after a church service on their way back they die after a prayer meeting rattling in tongues for hours you can't say they don't love god there are families if a man looks at you and says i love you even that man what will happen to him that night he will never repeat that statement again now he doesn't know why you too you don't know why you think the issue is okay am i too fat let me be on a diet no you are trying to rub palm oil on our boil remember our story I know many hard-working men hey, Jimmy, they have been working in their 20s sincere godly people till today they are begging 
there are people who start building 20 years it has not reached LinkedIn level no brothers and sisters we are intelligent how many graduates you see in a family seven graduates the only employed person in that family is a driver are they so stupid they are not lazy they will tell you they are not lazy most times we think it's because they are unserious and people erroneously say just forget it's just that they are not hard working please be careful some of you as you are sitting now if you are to be sincere you know things are not all right there are families when you give birth to people things happen there are pastors Ejimi, they refuse to deal with these things and they get into ministry anointed remember my story born again filled with the holy spirit working miracles but still oppressed by demons i went to people quietly and i said what is wrong they said don't don't worry man let me tell you i don't think there are few people here that quote scriptures more than me the demons didn't respect it shocking call the name of jesus nothing happened how do you call the name of jesus on a crusade ground and somebody is walking out of a crutch and you call it for your life and nothing happens I knew I needed to understand something your victory starts when you are humble when you have you say no 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 there has to be a puzzle to this equation it can be God mysterious sicknesses there are people today carrying hepatitis a B and whatever is they don't have when you go to the hospital and say I have hepatitis they ask you who had it in your family even genetics support the reality of transgenerational transference there is such a possibility the fact that you look like your father should teach you something about the realm of the spirit the fact that you look like your mother and your born again did not change your facial appearance is a spiritual reality something listen something should tell you that this thing is real now, you better trust the holy spirit all of us men of god are not older than you by more than 20 30 years the holy spirit is an ancient spirit is god's own spirit he was there when this thing started hallelujah a curse causeless shall not stand i have watched sincere people a jimmy bound sincerely there are pastors today as anointed as whatever you look at them you think it's the holy spirit no growth no increase and it's not only ministry it's a pattern anointed born again nothing happens no growth no increase how many people have they thrown away from they went to us just when they went they went with complete papers as soon as they were vetting people one got missing and you know that they didn't even hear said, look let me explain to you my papers were complete they said come and explain to your embassy in nigeria and they drive them down what of all these devilish things that fly around people's body fibroid lump hiv cancer see it killing men now once a man is 45 years old he starts getting afraid ask the doctors they will tell you prostate cancer once people start getting to 45 46 they are now they are now afraid because of cancer once a lady is approaching 28 29 even doctors start saying marry fast though because any moment from now and every stranger will start growing so once you are 30 and you are not married they will tell you look there's no room to hearing god just hurry up and get all your children fast how many do you plan to have five you need at least 10 years hurry up and catch up it's nonsense the devil is a liar this night patterns how about barrenness a trace of it how about fruitfulness but that not productive you give birth to 10 children all of them are useless 
there are patterns the ladies must get pregnant out of wedlock before the wedding. Now, they are innocent and the condition that leads to the pregnancy is the same thing that happened to someone else. They don't know themselves. But it happened. I have counseled people like that. Brothers and sisters, there is such a thing as that. And tonight, God wants to show us that there is a system in the kingdom where people can have dominion. It is not just about what Christ has done. It is that we can be alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in our heart. We have claimed things that we don't know anything about. Let me tell you something about ministry in Zaria that you do not know. I think it was you, Sam, I was talking to. Minister, the lifespan of successful ministry in Zaria is three years. You are a ministry in Zaria. If you survive three years, you know the mystery of continuity. After three years, something must arise attempting to rubbish your life. A scandal. Are we together? One kind of failure. Something will just evolve out of nowhere. There are so many people, especially music artists, They've risen from Zaria. Men of God risen from Zaria. But you don't know where they are today. You see a musician just appears. And for six months he's been invited everywhere. And after that you just go still. Next. We are waiting for the next person. <laughs> yeah. There is a level the devil pegs men. And pegs their destiny. You never rise beyond a level. There are families is defined for as long as you oscillate within that ambient of relevance it's okay but try to cross it that line will draw you back and say are you blind don't you see that there's a long line are we together men don't live beyond certain times the moment you are 35 death comes see i saw this pattern in my own extended family the only person in my father's family that is alive now is him and one of his sisters. I've shared it with you. Very sincere people. None of them died a good death. Mysterious sicknesses that will rubbish your life and none of them ever rose to certain levels. Some of your fathers are like that. They started working from 22. As it is now, if you send them 5,000, they will kneel down and say thank you. It's a cause. It's a cause. Some of you are in school as students, but they are calling you from home. Anything for this month, you say, mommy, just take it easy. We keep laughing and say there is nothing wrong. See, let me tell you. You don't deal with it, you marry, it follows you there. You don't deal with it, you... Because... As you are marrying, once you are standing with your necktie, two of you are bringing everything you represent and you move into the house. Do you know this is why people erroneously call people witches and wizards? It is because they are open to the prophetic, but because they do not have the accurate understanding of the word of God, they see the spirit that is behind that activity and mistaking it for the individual carrying it out. So they say, no, 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 no. And truly what they are saying is not a lie. They say your trouble started from the day this lady, one lady come. All of a sudden, you said you will marry her. You now got married. You were a millionaire. In five months, five months, you are looking for 10,000 to buy a new shoe. Mysterious things happen. Your first car got missing. The second car, police police caught it the third car is somewhere else your truck capsided like that the driver slept off listen and your life is reduced back and then you now go to a man of god i'm not i'm not talking against men of god you know i love the body of christ but you go somewhere and then the man genuine man of god now looks and says ah who did you marry hey, tosi <laughs> Thank God you are even still alive. It is just an example, darling. Just an example. Are we together now? Give me your hand now. Run away from me. You want to deny me now. To sin. Be nice to me. Be a nice wife. Are we together? And then the man. You see, men will consult quietly. 
they will announce in public is the anger you see publicly the man now returns home good evening darling or honey say see let me tell you i am throwing everything out of my life that is causing me failure he stops eating your food because he believes that eating your food is why he's now having high blood pressure and this lady is sincere she loves god are we together now and they cannot un why will you call such a nice woman a witch she may not be a witch but she's connected to something that is causing that effect plus the one you are now bringing we have not even talked about the word of the man hybrids of different formulas that are as a result of different spiritual things and you find out that things don't work in people's lives that's why in certain villages they even apportion certain regions and tell you they are what cost it doesn't happen in your village where they isolate a group of people and say these people whoever marries will either die or something and sincerely speaking you go and marry out of bold face and say love is love love is blind and Jimmy said marriage will open your eyes you now go and get married and find out that after the marriage two weeks after the marriage you are not hearing again one month after the marriage you can't walk again you see that tell me why a man who has been working in the civil service for 30 years should not have up to 1 million in his account? How many children grew up with him? Two children, he's still poor. There are families, win lottery, get anything, they will still be poor. It has nothing to do with money. It's a system. Listen, the system of causes outlive those who caused it. It can outlive it. The primary purpose of a cause is to create a system for transgenerational allegiance transgenerational allegiance allegiance to deities ultimately an allegiance to satan a system to create transgenerational allegiance our grandmothers and great grandmothers you hear of one woman giving birth to 14 children never went to a hospital no cs out of those 14 children one was a set of twins one was a set of triplets and truly she gave birth to them in the midst of fire and you still see her a mother of 13 children standing her stomach is as straight as an arrow no fibroid no nothing why because before the delivery there is a priest who asks the god and say remember just like we agreed we have been serving you half of our guinea corn is hanging on the tree in respect to your demands so whatever look upon that guinea corn and that goat that disappeared and please this woman now all of a sudden missionaries had passion but no intelligence they came to africa now we love the missionaries but don't forget that they were very limited people say they died of malaria are, are you are you with what you know now was it malaria that really killed them they didn't die of malaria malaria was the servant like a tray that carried that charm you just come in and all of a sudden you organize a crusade and say stop worshiping this deity 300 years old of worship and allegiance you have the gods to bring the head bring everything burn it and an old woman is just looking at you and pitying you jesus saves jesus heals they leave you quietly because they know that ignorance can alienate a man from the life of god and the moment you finish first you die all the followers die the remaining return and they say look this thing does not work If I didn't know this, I would have been a failure all my life. Are we together? I have seen this thing happen. With all humility, I don't know how many of my extended people, especially from my paternal side, that I can look and say, this person is successful today. No. No.
causes can come directly from God <laughs> directly from God this is not the cause of the law the cause of the law is not the, all the cause there is in the Bible directly from God number two causes can be transgenerational products of ancestry what we call ancestral causes there is such a thing as ancestral causes there is such a thing number three self-inflicted causes self-inflicted causes there are programmings that can come upon the lives of people which is a product of self-infliction the cause that we call the cause from God is what I also call a sinner's cause every sinner is under a cause everyone who has not acknowledged Jesus Christ please hear me carefully as his Lord and Savior believe it or not you are under a cause you are under a cause what is the cause the dominion of evil perpetually remains above you is a cause the moment you are not in Christ you qualify for the very cause that is upon creation that from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return that tons and thistles shall come upon your ground and with the, the sweat of your brow shall you feed there is a cause that is upon creation it cannot be taken away you can only be exempted from it hear me please that is the reason why the old earth will be purged there is a reason why fire will purge this earth there is a reality that is hanging upon this earth right now individuals born by default in sin did my mother conceive me he says and you are a victim of it mortality is a cause that came with creation there is such a possibility that a man can extend his life you can access the reality of God's life failure the cause if you are not in Christ listen you are not in Christ you qualify for the sinner's cause it's not something bad it's not even about what you did it's a reality God's own pronouncement upon creation as a result of men alienating his ways. And then I said number two, ancestral causes. Ancestral causes are products of violating the terms and agreements. Products of violating the terms and agreements that constituted the basis for mutual relationship between men and deities. There was such a provision in Africa as a continent where men fraternize with deities you see that in ancient Babylon you see that in Egypt the sun god Ra alongside thousands of other gods there was a very intelligent spiritual system of fraternity with them an agreement a covenant causes operate on legal grounds they don't operate by mistake they operate on legal grounds there is a legal system in the kingdom and don't forget righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne a system that God is obliged to honor who can stand against the Lord no one can no one That's the liberty he's bringing to you tonight. Who can stand against my king? No one can. No one will. Oh. Let's 
yourself when you walk out of this many of you will begin to see things change in your life in remarkable ways remarkable ways your prayer life will be so reduced to only worship because you will search around and see that there are no issues of concern again there is such a possibility that a man can sit down bless on the left and on the right an effulgence of zoe the reality of god's life practically at work in a man and they look at you and say pastor alpha is it true that you came from kogi state with this rest roundabout the witches left you they didn't leave me i came out i accessed a mystery because they are still there if they left you they will leave everybody there you mean you come from this state and you are not a drunkard no the drunkenness is still there i came out by a mystery of exemption this house I built it at what age 27 where did you get the money from the only person that built a house here was the king of the village and he built it at 63 and you tell them well 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 welcome to a new order where intelligence creates reality do you know you would die and you say no no the same mystery that built the house without resistance keeps the house You had the testimony of the gentleman diagnosed of prostate cancer and all of a sudden is that prostate cancer he would have died like a chicken then we will say how can Allah Sharia? you see what how we convince ourselves as if the will of God is a mystery I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord they are thoughts of good and not of evil I don't know poverty does not look like good oppression does not look like good no sir I counsel a couple Jimmy. they got married their wedding night that's supposed to be a night of joy their very wedding night a stranger walked physically to the woman and told her the same thing I did to your mother is what I would do to you she true story she got pregnant according to what she told me they were even happy people were dancing and in the night this stranger came again and this is all he did on her stomach and she got up in the morning bleeding profusely as if she would die machines don't diagnose causes machines cannot detect the presence of demons they only detect the effect of their presence We went to Ida. We always go there for Pastor Alpha's conference. And I remember one of the years when we traveled there, he took us on a tour and began to explain to us. We went to greet the king. The man refused to see us later on. And then we went somewhere and I saw foul. Remember, Market Square. One Market Square that we went. I saw it there with my eyes. And people were passing. Whoever did the sacrifice just scattered it there. Witchcraft is real. If you see anybody rising, he is exempted or yet to be a victim. Did you hear what I said? Exempted or, or the devil is allowing their ignorance to keep them going while they laugh at others. I say it's because you don't know. The day will do you. He will scatter and rubbish you into pieces. There are people who are so irrelevant as far as their impact to hell is concerned. The devil will say, just allow them to be busy. They think it's because they have overcome. The day something about your life and ministry strikes hell, you will see the reaction immediately. You can be praying your childish prayer and the devil say focus on those who are really just leave that person and you can convince yourself that because nothing has happened say no 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 I'm, i know what to say i don't talk too much and things happen the day 
that you ever say anything that strikes a chord in hell suddenly strangers will come to you and say don't do it again brothers and sisters if you see men rise as if satan does not exist it's not it's because they have accessed a mystery that immunes them this is what i'm teaching you tonight but to refuse that this does not exist is the beginning of deception beginning of deception the western world has been cheated in this area in a very big way because of advancement in medicine and advancement in all of these things oh they leave it to all the spirits and the, as the, the transcendental meditators and all of them come the nation of america listen their fathers understood this mystery they walked in power and when satan found out that that whole generation had covenanted their lives to god he left them and started growing with their children he said let's leave the fathers to die in the crusade ground and he started growing with the children and all the children came up with all kinds of things you know i mean there's if, if you are sick right now you cough ambulance is coming in five minutes and so they don't believe it now look at the disaster happening in the western world where people can kill themselves on youtube shoot their children effects they laughed at us in africa before that we are the ones who used to behave like that you carry arrows now they have a reprobate mind a generation successfully captured by hell a cause is a mystery a very deep mystery hallelujah how many beautiful ladies do you know beautiful godly god fearing the painful part is nobody has even come to say hi my dear you know you're a pretty lady it's not a lie you know what i'm saying it's not a lie how many parents went to all kinds of rivers and were dipped how many times to be pregnant There is a system in the kingdom for exemption but the first key is to acknowledge that there is such a reality on earth a lot of people don't believe causes are real it's foolish to believe sickness is real and poverty is real and not believe causes are real the same boss brought all of them how you know you are free from causes is that you also don't fall sick and you don't get poor if you can still get poor as a believer then make no mistakes to say a cause cannot come are you getting what i'm saying if as a believer i say are you born again yes are you blessed no i'm poor they say okay it's okay with time it will change are you a believer yes are you sick oh very sick are you a believer yes is there a manipulation of that no 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 are we not mocking ourselves what is the difference between sickness, poverty, and causes? If we do not get this, we will destroy ourselves. Every time I look at this next generation of Koinonia, our little ones, do you know what I tell myself? We have to run fast and correct everything that our parents could not correct in our lives before our children come correct it fast i look at these dear ones and i'm imagining a time that they will now start growing and all of a sudden they will become victims our parents were sincere people but they didn't know the way out so many of us we are in the middle of two generations correcting the errors of the father and setting precedence for a new generation is worth enduring are you hearing what i'm saying hear me you are you are hearing this message tonight if you are a lady here as you are hearing it just just know that you are you are hearing it not just for yourself but you are hearing it for a generation you ignore what i'm saying it will pain you to watch your children go through this and you will remember you had a chance to be free no. i cannot allow my children go through this let me suffer it let me go through it no matter what it will cost me if i go through the delay let it be that is me that went through for them 
so that these dear ones will move forward if i go through the poverty let it be that it's me that will suffer it but not that i will bring a child and watch your child die like a chicken and turn and say father what did i do wrong and you say me too that's how i saw it everybody shout no way How many students do very well secondary school brilliant people why nine papers they step into the university and all of a sudden hundred level result nine f's you think they are dull they are conducting tutorials but they enter the exam hall they only remember in the night when the exam has finished it's not everybody who is lazy let me tell you what of recurrent sicknesses there are people today there is no month they don't fall sick go to the hospital they will tell you nothing is wrong now the doctors are wiser thank god for spiritual people becoming doctors they don't waste time again the moment they diagnose you they see that you have come once twice they'll say do you know what find any available crusade and run quickly go to the front early and stand there and trust god to wipe your tears that's why we need more spiritual people getting into our hospitals so that they will not allow people to die like chickens i look forward to times where god will give men and women of power the moment you are a midwife helping a woman give birth and the baby is not coming out you detect by the spirit this is witchcraft right there shakato soto labaya help that lady and all of a sudden you find out that that woman gives birth koinonia today is not rising because there are no demons let me tell you make no mistakes only god knows how many powers try to kill me every day i told you all the time only god knows how many people take my names to shrines oh it has never happened in israel there was a woman called the widow of Nain what killed her husband she had only one child one child the husband now died the child now died on her way going jesus saw and said no this is not the issue of burial i need to change something here there are families you will see them in a community 32 people only one percent of them are men and all the men are mad men they are not they are, their brains are not even in place again madman is a woman that pays the school fees of children is a woman that drives car is a woman that builds a house is a woman that does everything all the men become useless you see them playing draft in the morning and laughing and taking beer it's a cause There are families with a cause where the children never see their grandparents either they are in exile or they die please tonight you are going to offer yourself as a living sacrifice that will change this you you will have to be a wicked person if you allow your children go through this thing i'm telling you what of poverty what of poverty there are many people who went to harvard came back anything they start die the day you want to start importing it that's when government banned it why was it exactly others have finished making their money just when you were about to start what of people in ministry they think it's normal everybody they raise disappoints them there is a spirit they raise so many men but they disappoint them there is no helper a man will be 30 years in ministry who has become a father in the faith you should have people to you should not beg for bread again but there is no man you call for help there is nobody some of you see some of these women walking on the street 71 years carrying firewood where are the children she gave birth to where are they one is in prison the other one is security somewhere and they are about to throw him out 
you find families where a lady has seven children from seven different men seven different men she honestly does not even know which one is the husband of which because a madman will just rape her somewhere and sometimes she can even be coming back from the house of god it's a programming it looks like a coincidence what kind of coincidence keeps happening you start business you crash you always lose money you always lose joy you always lose peace you always run into trouble they are chasing a thief the moment they pass you that's when police will say from this place pack all of them you were innocent say programming you reign you ancient zion king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your own break forth thou fountains of the deep and we you are mighty on your listen help me how can a man lose a job in 1999 until now he has not gotten a job is it that dull see let me tell you something sit down if you can we'll soon stand up and pray listen listen to me when you study the laws of mechanics sir isaac newton postulated a law we call it the first law of mechanics and this is what it states that everybody continues in its uniform motion or a static state right it remains there until compelled by an external force to act otherwise through the law of inertia that if i leave this in one place theoretically speaking thank you i should come and find it in one place after a long time that's how the, your destiny will be if you sit down and you are wishing it will remain like that the only thing that will be changing is your age but your condition will remain the same how about men have you seen families where the men never leave their parents homes there is such a thing they bring their wife all the cousins and their wives to their father's house you see that the house they are staying was the grandfather's house the guy works in nmpc but cannot rent a good house you ask him why you say okay i'll do something about it 45 years he's still in his father's house they share the parlor they compartmentalize the kitchen if you buy your first car 50 years is that a testimony no you build a house at 55 is that a testimony take seriously what i'm saying what of ministries there are churches that this cause of poverty has still landed even on the ministers you will see a church with members but prosperity zero when it comes to finances you will never see increase in that area but tonight god put this body in my heart because it's time for somebody's lifting yes it is yes it is yes it is barrenness every look at me i want to tell you something now and please listen we are here to help ourselves but let me give you an information every case of barrenness is spiritual e-v-e-r-y every case of barrenness is spiritual let me repeat it 
every case of barrenness is spiritual so says the bible the remedy for every case of barrenness was spiritual and god opened the womb of rachel and god opened the womb of leah and god shot the womb of a milka david's wife every so that when some things happen to you you don't waste time you know where to go for to look for help quickly quickly recurrent deaths i remember one lady i can't remember um who now but there used to be a lady i remember the story faintly now that was dedicated to snakes literally snakes and the way snake molds this molting it happens to her physically the outer skin begins to you know swell like peel i'm not talking of all just skin irritation literally like a snake molting it's good to marry from the house of god because the job has been done you hear what i'm saying is a good advice i'm telling you no matter what is pursuing you bring it to the house of god the house of god is a factory where true solution is provided when the devil wants to rubbish you he makes you successful and then he goes to connect you with a very wrong person and your life begins to know that a cause causeless shall not stand self-inflicted causes are results of ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience ignorance and disobedience self-inflicted causes are products of ignorance and disobedience no matter how born again you are if you don't tithe your heavens are closed that for sure whatever you think about the situation notwithstanding seeing then that these realities are true what provision is in the kingdom to bail men out and exempt them I'm going to show you the system in the kingdom designed to set men free. Ready? Psalms 102, verse 13. It's a mystery very few people understand. Please give us Psalms 102, verse 13. Read it if you're a child of God. One, two, read. three things mercy time favor mercy time favor thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her even the set time the kairos moment the opportune time is come because of that arise and have mercy let me tell you something about the mercy of God. The mercy of God is not an attribute for sinners. The salvation of sinners only pass through the mystery of mercy. But mercy is more than, more than a provision just for sinners to experience salvation. You have to understand this. The mercy of God is part of the attributes of his person. The mercy of God is a system a system in the kingdom where guilty people are made free the mercy of god is a system is a provision in his wisdom his infinite wisdom he factored in a provision although righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne but in his dealings with man he introduced a mystery let me tell you something about mercy look up mercy only works for people who are in time mercy cannot work in eternity 
otherwise satan will not be where he is that's why he says his mercies are new every he ties time to the operation of mercy meaning whenever just like he said as far as the earth remains so when you can see the morning the mercy of god is valid mercy mercy is the attribute of god listen that provokes his help to your life regardless of your satisfying the condition for it or not mercy is a powerful attribute that is the ancient secret that the nation of israel used to turn around battles when they sinned against god god gave them over to their enemies and every time a prophet would intercept there was an enchantment they would have to chant something you are good and your mercy it was not a song it was an invocation every time they started singing that song for he is good and his mercy see how many times the psalmist uses it the psalmist was a benefactor of the mercy of god did everything wrong but every time god want to come in he will remind him the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love the bible tells us that the lord's mercy can triumph come on now that the lord's mercy can triumph over judgment so when i get to the end of my road i know that i am deserving of everything should happen that should happen yes my father sacrificed to idols yes my carelessness i am not a tighter i am qualified for financial bankruptcy the last card i danced it did not work i prayed it did not work the attribute for bailout is invoking the mercy of god you are good and your mercy is forever hallelujah you are good and your mercy is forever Hallelujah. Samson lost his strength to Delilah. The Bible says his eyes were plucked, the symbol of light in his life, and the mystery that surrounded his power, his hair shoven completely. And they took him. The Bible says they took him to their temple to make mockery of God. Everything was over. But that Samson leaned there, they didn't watch the hair grow. He said, Oh Lord, he cried for mercy. And the moment he did that, see, there is one prayer God cannot say no to. If you have never been confident of a prayer that will be answered, try the prayer of mercy. Invoke mercy. Lord, I know I am undeserving of this, but I invoke your mercy. It is of the Lord's mercy. Listen. It is of the Lord's mercy. Meaning, my lifetime is too fast for me to not have made a mistake. But it is of the Lord's mercy. Somewhere in my work, it creates a system, a provision. See, let me tell you. It is on grounds of this that the Bible can say, Rejoice not over me, my enemies. For when you think, Ah, there was a time his car now had an accident will he ever rise again don't go ah. the worst witchcraft in your life is to stop you from receiving God's mercy you are finished mercy and Samson pushed and the Bible says he killed more people at his death than his lifetime what of blind Bartimaeus thou son of David hold on he never said heal me the bible says god will give us the desires of our heart i thought it would be thou son of david heal me he said thou son of david have mercy mercy is an open check and god had to come he left and came thou son of david there were two condemned criminals on the cross condemned 
once you hang on that cross it's over for you two condemned criminals one was talking nonsense like many people are still doing their quarter to finish in life and they are still making noise and the other one provoked his mercy and he said this day today not tomorrow today you will be with me in paradise are we together listen the mercy of God is an attribute you need in your life it's not for sinners the mercy of God was designed in your work with him to remedy for your limitations there is such a thing as limitation if I tell you every anointing that is in my life is just because of prayer and fasting I will be lying no I have mastered the art of God's mercy years ago during a pastor's, a pastor's conference the ministers were lying down and praying and the minister who was testifying this said he went to lie down close to Papa Deboe to hear the prayer he was praying and he said for over two or three hours all Papa Deboe was saying was mercy mercy Lord you would think he stole church money he knew he understood to pastor millions of people you don't just need anointing you need mercy 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 Jesus met a woman by the well when he met that woman by the well they started a conversation number one that woman was a prostitute correct and then because of that more the disciples oh, no, 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 don't come and corrupt Jesus you're a bad woman and Jesus started talking with her and she started touching his mercy and at the end of it that woman ran and said come and see the man who has told me what I have done mercy mercy vetoes everything in your life and when the door settles you are still standing that's why you see those who know this when people are dancing and saying the power of my might has given me this oh this great ministry koinonia apostle what wisdom you are such an anointed man i just laugh and look at them you need to hear my prayer in the secret place the mercy of god when david one day the bible says when kings go for war david was meandering his balcony correct and he looked at somebody's wife she was baffing and from the altitude he could see her nakedness and he desired her the bible says he sent and they fetched that woman and they came he now got a man's wife pregnant and ordered that they go and call uriah in the heat of war not minding whether the nation of israel would die they carried uriah and brought uriah uriah said my king i'm here he says i just wanted you to come and have you seen your wife recently yes, ah, have you forgotten the ordinances of Israel I should be there in the heat of battle and he got angry and all he did listen was to write a letter a man's own death sentence and gave him to the battle and the painful part is that he died question what was the difference between Cain and David Cain killed Abel. Blood started crying. Meaning when David killed Uriah, blood should be crying. Correct? David went, wept, 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 wept. When all of that happened, you would think that after the, the child died, he would now tell the wife, he said, okay, go. I will marry you again. Who was the mother of Solomon? <laughs> he did it again. Correct? is david that will write his sins and ask them to sing it as a song if it had not been the lord by my side now may israel say if it had not been the lord he will ask the nation of israel to chorus for his message shall endure ever faithful ever sure and they will begin to sing it god want to destroy david david would just find he knew how to just tie god down 
And God said, this is a man after my own heart. A man that understands. Not even Moses was called a man after his heart. Mercy. This is what our families need. This is what we need. This is what many ministries need. This is what many businesses need. Let me tell you something. We are rounding up. There is a system to be a recipient of God's mercy. Number one. A broken and a contrite heart. Write it down. Arrogant people are never qualified to be the benefactors of God's mercy. For as long as you think by yourself and in your strength you are qualified and deserving, you will never have it. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender mercy I see day after day. forefathers did not do anything you are a joker but the mercy of God has a way of exempting you the mercy of God has a way of exempting you from the rubbish and the nonsense that should be your lot the mercy of God can change any negative prophecy over any man's life regardless of what was seen about you a particular prophet now came and met David correct and then started to speak to him in parables there was a certain man who had a vineyard and somebody somebody came and grabbed the vineyard and David said who is that was angry say you are the one who watch this do you know David was supposed to die we have a series on mercy that will deal with I don't want to go there but do you know when you read that scripture when David asked for mercy God said that death had been taken from him David would have died David would have died the wages of sin is not sickness the wages of sin is death but mercy but mercy but mercy there are some of you here legally you are supposed to be failures in life so based on that concoction those who knew you had the gods to even prophesy it and what they were saying is right but mercy when you introduce mercy to the equation calculation changes everything changes so a murderer like Moses could now become a deliverer by the mercy and the grace of God he said it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed let me tell you one of the greatest ways to break causes hear me one of the greatest ways to end causes is to invoke the mercy of God the mercy of God the mercy of God over your life invoke the mercy of God over the works of your hands the moment even as human beings if somebody tells you sorry if I look at you now come and make up I look at you and I say look you know you did this and I'm supposed to deal with you and all of a sudden you kneel down and say sir I am sorry do you not know that this position paralyzes me at once I look at you and say ah, I hate you 
but you have done something now that on a very good day what I plan to do for you I would have dealt with you I would have humiliated you I would have made sure your career were miserable but mercy and the terrible thing about all the well not terrible in righteousness about mercy is that every time mercy is invoked it not only solves the current problem it promotes you mercy will always lift mercy will always lift it will not just take away the current predicament but it will lift you and take you higher higher by the mercy and the grace of God by the mercy and by the grace of God so it says thou shall arise and have mercy upon Joshua Selman upon Koinonia for the time the time the Lord wants to lift me but there are certain levels of light and illumination I do not yet know and if I'm to wait until I know all those things I may never rise so he introduces his mercy and I rise to realms that even me I know that is beyond my level of understanding the mercy of God you will find yourself in the company of people you know your age and your level in life should not bring you their skills brought them but the mercy of God took you there as we travel around I have seen the honor of God by the grace of God and it never stops humbling me when I see the things that people do on account of their perception of the grace of God upon my life sometimes I stand by the mirror and I look I say except for the mercy of God who dash monkey banana who really dash monkey banana you see it's not false humility it's an acknowledgement of truth the mercy of God you are there boasting about being an entrepreneur and you don't have up to 100,000 in your account you better realize that there is a dimension of the mercy of God in this equation that can arise and lift you are you hearing what I'm saying there is a dimension in ministry I believe in principles I teach principles here but let me tell you the truth there are many gaps in this equation to success that we are still learning how it works there are still gaps and one thing I've learned is that those gaps are provisions that only God can fill that's where his mercy comes in and he amplifies and multiplies little things and your life becomes a sign and a wonder because I have seen women who never train their children the children eight children all of them became great they got born again five are pastors all of them are millionaires they love God they are wonderful people walking in the ways of God but the woman and her husband don't know jack about parenting that one is not wisdom again let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength the bible says but let him that glory at glory in this that he understand and knoweth me when you know him you know he's full of compassion and mercy i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is too good i will worship him forever Love forever because this God is too good. See, way before I learned certain principles, I knew now I was already getting their results. When I learned the principle, I knew that truly favor and the mercy of God really qualifies the unqualified. I have seen levels of breakthrough in my life that happened before I knew the principles that brought them yes this is true way before I understood principles of church growth and increase I had been seeing the hand of God and it's, there is a science to growth if you don't know it it should not happen but mercy 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 
tonight we are going to invoke mercy upon our lives upon our families and take away this air of pride that makes you think i have to marry because i'm beautiful i think i'm intelligent i should be a millionaire by now the pride of men is the reason why they never get qualified for mercy one of the most powerful mysteries of exemption against causes against yokes listen i've seen people at jimmy they are not even born again yet but sincerely you know they call it in house affair in jimmy you've seen that happen they take their names to the harbalists and the harbalists will reject it and they are not born again they don't love god they don't know him but their hearts are so sincere somehow they know there is a god out there and whoever it is they are grateful to him and god says protect them regardless of the fact that they are not prayerful their hearts are wicked yet god protects them i've seen drunkards on the road that would drink to stupor and enter their car and drive safely back home they never fear death and somehow you even pray and say you're a wicked man God will deal with you but you'll find out that 10 years that guy is still drowsing his way in this world and not dead they never fear anything they hear that there is crisis bomb will explode where you know they are in the night you still see him back safe and hale and hearty you didn't die and he laughs that guy doesn't take communion that guy has never attended prayer meeting that guy has never attended miracle service he doesn't even know what his genotype is honestly he doesn't know whether he's sick or healthy all he knows is that his heart is a sincere heart and it cries out to god destroy it not for there is a blessing in it destroy it not for there is a blessing this is what has kept some of our parents so because you know that if it's based on keeping the principles of the kingdom they would have died since it would have it would have swallowed them if the lord had not been by my side now may israel say i think of what men would have done to me when i didn't know the principles of restoration when i didn't know the principles of long life i imagine what would have happened and i wonder how many things i do not know now that i will know in the future how i walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death yet his mercy keeps me if all else fail invoke his mercy i give you a formula if all else fails invoke his mercy you have submitted names for prayer requests and nothing has happened lord mercy for my family they are all sinners mercy for my family mercy for this yoke of darkness that is destroying men nobody in my family is making it and on legal basis the devil has his hold upon them and if you try to talk to them the painful part is they won't listen to you because the god of this system has blinded their minds but you can invoke mercy invoke mercy invoke mercy are you blessed tonight i want you to sing for me the stanza of that song himela himela oh kaka help me Just that stanza, the stanza of the song. That's what I really want to hear. When I think upon your goodness and your faithfulness each day.
And you are about to use it now. Ha! And he showed me Joshua the high priest. Standing before the Lord. And the accuser came before him. Attempting to rail accusations. And he said is this not a reed. That I have taken out of fire. And he said the Lord rebuke you. Listen. The mercy of God is a weapon. You can use it and say Satan. I know you are supposed to destroy me but what about this I present to you the mercy of God I present to you the blood of the eternal covenant I present to you the advocacy of Jesus at the right hand of the father standing and speaking I present to you the sinless blood I present to you Calvary Lift your voice Invoke mercy Invoke mercy Upon every voice The voice of mercy The voice of wisdom The voice of sin The voice of failure I invoke mercy I use it as a weapon Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hear me. Tonight you are going to use it as a weapon over the devourer. I know I've not been a titer. You are authorized to destroy me. But see the blood. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, you should be destroyed. But the blood will speak. Hear me. You live the wayward life and all kinds of things happen and the earth cries against you but when I see the blood when I see the blood you were involved in all kinds of blood covenants and fraternities in ignorance but now that you are in Christ when I see the blood lift up your voice and plead the blood hey! invoke mercy come on now invoke mercy Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting. There are handwritings, there are records kept in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not live long. There are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not be blessed. There are records in the realm of the spirit that testify that you should not have any child again. The devil says you wasted all your children and all of them have gone. There is a record in the realm of the spirit that says you have misused all the opportunities that you were given. But tonight, plead the blood. It can blot it out. Come on now. It can blot it out. It can blot it out. It can blot out covenant. It can blot out covenant. It can blot out covenant. I command you the blood of the Lord in the name of in the Jesus. Repart the Korean power. Be critique by the Gata. He brought the party by the Perica Patosi Balati. He brought the party in the Bacosa. Repapa Papa. He brought the Hallelujah. Hear me. A cause causeless shall not stand. A cause causeless. So if the blood of Jesus takes away the legal access, the effects must leave me too. Open your mouth and declare every pattern you have been blotted, you live my life. Patterns of barrenness, patterns of failure. Come on now, Koinonia, are you praying? Hear me. 
Listen, listen, listen. Listen. When you activate this, you will find out that no longer will there be an accusation to say, oh, you once in, were in the world, you committed 19 abortions and blood is speaking and that's why your life is not moving. It should not move. But now that you have invoked mercy, it makes the cause causeless. That means it should not come again. Are we together? You stole money. Help them, please. And all of that, you destroyed another person's destiny. But now that you are in Christ, what of the blood? He showed me Joshua, the high priest. Please take seriously. This is what I did for my own life, oh. Let me tell you. For we rise to our access to mysteries in the kingdom. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nada o kaka sunanka, o bangi chika isaya bo. Nagi mama sunanka, o bangi chika. Ni nada o kaka sunanka, o bangi chika isaya bo. It's an anthem for a generation. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We speak. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. Sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name. This is not a sermon for tea and bread. This is not a sermon for give me this. God will do it. But we're talking of nations. The ministry of warfare and intercession that an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader it's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become pray it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by God's integrity let me tell you this if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh Haman do not rejoice Esther is still in the palace Esther is still in the palace and she still has access to Hazarus that which has been signed can be changed. Listen to me. The days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus. All this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread. We are talking of nations. Our children are in trouble.
Man carrying things that belong to a generation, not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day set you over territories nations and over kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build god is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in kano is yours god is sharing nations and saying i i allocate territories Who can sing for me that song? We'll bow down and say you are God. You know the song? sit down let's sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me these spirits influence culture 
these spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people I shared this morning during the church service that one time I remember I was in Shiroro. We were ministering in a crusade and I saw a group. It was up to 15 or 16 people, women. It was a pattern I saw there. The moment the women gave birth, they became deaf and dumb immediately. I said, what is this? It was no longer a sickness. Listen, when you see a widespread of a pattern, it's a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits. There are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a CEO, this one was a customs officer. But right now, if you give him 10,000, he will say thank you. What happened? These powers. There are churches, there are territories where a church cannot survive five years. Impossible. Something must happen. The man will die. A scandal will tear him down. Something must happen. There are powers. When Daniel began to pray, the prayer was affecting the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. The spirits that controlled Medopersia. His prayer, Daniel was not saying, Lord, sort me out. Uh -uh. He found out that the time of the captivity of Israel in Babylon had come to pass. And he started praying. I, Daniel, understood by books. I read and I saw that by this time in prophecy, we should not be in captivity. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And he began to pray. And when he began to pray, heaven, don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know. This is not about New Testament and Old Testament. It's what happens in the realm of the Spirit. The moment they began to pray, Gabriel, the angel that brings messages, the angel of service, that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth, he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the Bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. There is ranking in the spirit, a prince, not a traditional ruler, a prince let me tell you this the foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why Satan will tear nations down all these childish teachings that continue to move around that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation Some of those teachings are deceptions, activities of lying spirits. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. We are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there. We are watching a woman barren, her daughter barren, granddaughter barren, we say nothing is happening. How can you say nothing is happening? A grandmother raped by someone, 
the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of god's program within our land there is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. once you are more than 18 it does not disturb you it's like satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers he's not disturbing babies he's not disturbing the young people the old people already they're already there but those teenagers I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers their resentment for God their obsession for technology they are outspoken that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion and we are watching saying nothing is happening one day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory they are doing it there is a spirit making it happen Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No! It's a spirit. The spirit of defiance. The spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. god has men elisha said tell the man to come and let him know there is a prophet in israel not there is a god in israel hallelujah you do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream tv if there is the name jesus there is the name Holy Spirit. There is the name eternal life. It falls under the same category as some of those words that we, they don't allow to be pronounced. Including God, Jesus. Ah. You tell a preacher to preach and there's no name Jesus. There's no salvation. There's no God. There's no redemption. What is he preaching? The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men. It's not their ability to inflict sickness. No. That's cheap. It's not their ability to bring death. That's cheap. But to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the God of this world, who blinded their mind? The God of this world. There are gods that station within territories. There are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family. The devil took their lives away. And left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male two years and above that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers. 
because controlling powers are there and while that is happening we are laughing you know i've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking Hme about the testimony of the dear lady one uh, precious lady that i came i met i saw you people so excited and i wanted to know what was going on and when he told me the story i said you see it now and someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind are you joking are you joking i've seen demons so this is not something i'm just talking i've seen them the first time i saw a real physical demon it was then in the campus i was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as i turned i saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me i'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables i've seen these spirits they are real i know what they do on earth i know what they do in families there are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground i love you i love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are they not prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it it's a signature of the prayer of the saints shut down the prayer of the saints in this city then you will know what satan has always wanted to do i believe in the ministry of prayer it is not the issue of being a pentecostal the days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon you are praying to secure your children listen let me tell you this day and age listen do you know if your child leaves home to go to school you should pray what happens to that child from the door of your house to school that child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know By evening he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep daddy what is this and you say who taught you say my teacher taught me your teacher yes sir controlling powers koinonia is not thriving just because satan does not know we are here is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire i said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry i supervise by myself and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play now every department 
plays that strategic role but because of the spiritual component the prayer department the worship team you always see me on their case with the leaders there is a reason why because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we are in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? It's a spirit. How many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home, a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them? How many people have you seen final exam, final paper, they just find something on the ground and say that's it, you are gone. There is no such thing that is just, it's no coincidence. It's the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ah, apostle don't buy why <laughs> you are dead you are dead one time Archbishop Benson Idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl. I think it was an incantation. And he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it. <laughs> they had already caught it. Say, why waste? Why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice? God does not love wastage. He said, gather the crumbs that there be no wastage. See, let me tell you this. If you do not know the power of prayer, you will fear demons to death. hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um, what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story you will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up 
and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he, he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not i'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot you know it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some tout somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther parakatusiata you sense anything around your vicinity you don't wait to understand what it is tap your wife and say wake up when you do that twice three times one month the devil will know where to pass see let me tell you this whatever you allow to happen to your life don't blame god whatever you allow to happen to your family don't blame god I'm, I'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood not a need driven prayer hallelujah i heard of a man recently for one four years I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to be sure so that i don't exaggerate anything four years the wife refused to get pregnant the man was tired one day he came back from fellowship the wife was sleeping he came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy no i mean it if i'm joking i'll tell you i'm joking he was tired of this thing and said no he knelt down you just sleep you are my wife i'm the one who paid your dowry let me face this spirit of barrenness see there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory within your family hallelujah i was so encouraged when i heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you
our generation has not understood the power of prayer those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer mm -mm. Mm -mm. they don't negotiate they decide and agree god are you in this if god says yes declare anything that stands the way hallelujah praise the lord a prayerless christian is a powerless christian a prayerless territory is a powerless territory a prayerless couple is a powerless couple a prayerless business is a powerless business a prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry please sit down boy our time is gone the first key to territorial dominion is priesthood koinonia pray don't just pray on tuesday pray pray you go back this night trust god for grace even if it's 15 minutes walk around your room a little before you lie down apostle you don't know how busy i am that is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life if you search for excuses you will always find one let me tell you this i have taught you and i pray you will believe it master the power of night prayers master the power of night prayers a generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that would not be powerful i'm telling you this see there is a time when you will enter your sabbath in experience a young man personally now it's not i'm not saying this is the bible it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny you are building rubbles the night is when men who are men pray the night is when men who are priests pray the night is when men who are watchmen pray the night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray let me tell you sincerely i have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time and sleep it's a sacrifice you are supposed to get a job that god will use to change your family and your territory and while you are sleeping they send a letter from a parastator we need these 41 names in the list and there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed and every other person is in a herbally shrine forcing his name to remain there and you are snoring away your your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist i may not have access to the office but i can pray i can pray i've seen the ministry of angels in my life i know that angels are real i know that they are real when you pray there are times i've tried to look for things and i could not find them and i prayed and slept and in my dream i got up and went to where it was and i woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life i curse it now this night in the name of jesus all the movies internet browsing that distract you i'm not saying they are wrong but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life, I separate you from it now. It was in the night that Jacob wrestled with God and got power. It was in the night that God came to Solomon and he received something. Men receive things in the night. Don't waste your night charge your atmosphere 
sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship while you are sleeping you are receiving you wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing see let me tell you these are not things we are these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. oh lord help our generation help our generation help our generation in the name of jesus christ hear me if you are a minister of the gospel in this place that means you are in ministry or you are trusting god to be in ministry please wake up i deliver you from laziness hear me ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed number two goodness the second principle or territorial dominion is the power of faith hebrews 11 33 the power of faith you cannot take over a territory when you doubt god you cannot take over a territory when you do not believe god hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh-huh subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions listen the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who God is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe God and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny the Bible says that, listen, he said that Lot and Co were hijacked and captured. And Abraham said, what did I hear? You carried my cousin? Gather all the war men and let us go. Ah, courage. Courage. Faith. The righteous are as bold as a lion. That lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people. The lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when God called me to ministry I called my father and my mother and I knelt down before them and I told them God has called me all my life I'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said, God bless you. We bid you Godspeed. Go well. That's it. I'm not doing well because the church I was serving before did not give me money. No, sir. 
listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart Please pray from the depth of your heart. Shabran <laughs> Pray everyone, you are praying in the spirit. Kaparato sada brada gede balada bo, embrete ke la prasada balato brada gede balada bo. Shala baranda kata pras gede balato shabradi gede balada bo, 
Rataka Prusa de Belekete Shala Paria da Baladaba Rapadus Sada Brandega da Baladus Ete Preteke Leparusa Zialabada. It's a sacrifice you are making for your destiny. It's a sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shikaruta Salabara. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Abarada balakata bradegedesh, skade barada balada bakota shada bradegede baladas, emprata kaparuta shala bradegede balad. Balabu shalabradi gidi balas, ekete labradu shalabradi gidi balada balada bo. Sebaru hasila bahasia da balada bo. Alleluia, alleluia. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through you are building something for a generation you are building something that will last rain will come and go but what comes upon you comes and stays are we together now praise the lord let's continue the power of faith now faith is the bible says the substance of things hoped for and the evidence the tangibility of things not seen hear me everyone you want to take over territories you will need to believe in god not believe in an uncle not believe in an auntie not believe in an asset not believe in an investment you need to believe in god god is able i may not know how but i know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory many christians and especially our generation we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith we doubt everything and we do not take god at his word i've given you a little story years ago when i used to bang those days with first bank way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle alert. And I would stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I would queue for hours believing. Because I read in my Bible what things soever ye desire. When you pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless, but your faith is being developed. The idea is not for you to go and see or receive something. The idea is an exercise of your faith. So that tomorrow when he says, take this nation, you say, Lord, I'm able. We are well able. Unbelief is dangerous. My only limitation in my life 
is the voice of God and time. My only limitation in life is the voice of God and time. Time that honors the law of process. If God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. It's a wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first to be challenged by evil spirits. It will take your faith to command victory. We're a generation that loves impartation. And impartation is important. But let me tell you something. There are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring. It's a well you have to dig by believing God. If I perish, I perish. When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages, being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home brand new out of the cave slot it in and there are koinonia messages all how do you explain that that's what happened when faith listen you will never see the glory of god until you believe you will never see the glory of god until you believe where a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move your only guarantee is the word of God. The word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do. From the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal, I believe that was a career of the blessing. From the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache, I believe that his anointing was upon my life. And I believe that he was going to use me. We are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you. Help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you. But it's really my uncle that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my certificates that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Pray, pray. Shila parus karia da ba da ba da ba. Koinonia, pray.
He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring His word to pass. He reigns. He reigns. My God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. But as it is, you look so weak and you will not believe it. You don't know the village I come from. I cannot even speak English well. That's not what God is saying. Believe me and let me take you there. By myself. Years ago, when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government, I believed him. Our very first crusade, I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land. We didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time. Every one of our crusades that we had gone, I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings. I believe God. It's none of your business who my father is. It's none of your business who my mother is. That's not what God said. That's not the condition for his word. I believe him. The same way some of you are here and God, you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals. You wake up in the morning and say, it's a lie. It's not for people like us. We are the any house. Stop that, that ungodly talk and say, Lord, with all humility, I believe. Let it come. I believe you. It was in Port Harcourt. I was tending to a sick, one of our sick aunties, where I was staying in 2007. I was in Port Harcourt. And she was on her sick bed. She eventually died. And I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there. And I was there. We were running shifts. And then from the... I don't know which of the floors now i just looked at um the window and all of a sudden i was caught up in a vision and in that vision i saw the international headquarters of this ministry i saw 37 flags and i saw white men i saw nations coming i said what is this and god said that's where you are going i believed him i said let's go oh god let's go i believe you 
God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience. I believed him. I believed him. I believed him. Ah. Do, can you believe God? One day I remember growing up, I told my mother, I said, do not worry about the things that are happening. One day, you will eat and never have to beg for bread again. And it will be in your lifetime. I said it. See, the righteousness of faith speaks. It does not assume. You make statements that sometimes you are afraid. My wife, right now we may be soaking Gary. But in the name of Jesus, we will give to nations. And when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say, foolish man, respect yourself. My faith, it reaches out to you. I believe your word for me today. My faith reaches out to you. Listen, one day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said, son, I will give you a gold mine. I believed it literally. I know it may have a prophetic meaning, but I believed it literally. Until three years ago, when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine, God said it and I believed it see listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say I believed God and it was a lie if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust God so what if you find out it's not God that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow God said it but I'm ashamed I'm afraid let them not laugh at me I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance. It was a stupid thing. It was suicidal. But I did it. And God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again. I remember it was in this ministry. God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry. Literally 0.00. .00 and I believed him. Stupidly believed him. One week after that. God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from. But I know whom I believed. If God says I will give you a house, believe him. If God says you will feed nations, believe him. If God says you will pay the school fees of a generation, believe him. Don't believe your ATM. Let God be true and every man a liar. Please hear what I'm telling you today. This life and this destiny, I stand before the God of heaven. And may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance. But there are many things. One of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens. There are many things that I've said. Today, Prof said something here that really touched me. Um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it, he will do it. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now. Same God right now. If he did it before, if he did it before.
when we started the koinonia worship team i stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations and i told them i said do you know why i know what god showed me about you that days will come you will sing and nations will sing your songs stay and be dealt with by the spirit those days some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and say sit down sit down today it's amazing the way one by one it's already starting like droplets but it's an avalanche it will come and you will see the songs that come from here songs that will mentor nations songs of warfare songs of victory songs of the throne you see most times we don't believe men till it's too late we we'll say he said it all i believe him i believe you that's why you see me stand to teach you do you know let me confess true confession i was i had a meeting before coming here you know i had a meeting and then um just briefly met with uh, a family and then a woman before coming preparing to come for koinonia and while i was preparing i was so tired i sat down and i didn't know which one to do to eat or to rest and i stood i was so tired and i was telling the woman i said my god all i want to do now is to sleep but i just got up i said i rebuke that statement there is a generation to mentor there are people to raise and she said ah, apostle i know you as soon as you are done with all this talk the zeal of the lord that is in you you will quickly go and prepare and stand up and truly you see me standing now i'm done here and i'm counseling for hours seven in the morning i'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function do a few things and return sacrifice but that happens because god said so god promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant i believed him you do what i do in the strength of the flesh you will not be sick you will die I say it without exaggeration you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said look my son just do your best take out time once in a while and rest I said I know and I believe I will rest but the king's business requires haste there are destinies to be raised there are impartations to come to nations hallelujah praise the Lord I went to bed to five it was as if i just turned my head and i checked the time and it was morning the last thing i remember was that i was going to take there was water by the side of my bed and a drink and i remember i was preparing that in five minutes i'll just turn and take a sip and i had slept it was already morning and i got up had to brush up on my notes to come why because when you are about his business he will maintain you There are things you cannot lie about not for long it will be clear see let me tell you this god has been faithful to me you see these hands i have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases communicable ones i'm not supposed to be alive today based on the things and the people i have touched You must believe God God told me forget about cars and houses focus on me I've raised men already to do that for you I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car I was happy and God said it's not your car just pray for him and let him carry his car and go I wanted to say God the next time you will give me lift <laughs> but I was happy Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired. You are just passionate. But listen, let me tell you this. You must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow. If you love your today more than tomorrow, the door has closed. Closed by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I was in secondary school and the fire of God fell upon us, we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Catacruz. 
yes we would pray sometimes immediately after preps it was supposed to be a little one hour prayer and some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them look go to your hostel and sleep one hour it will become a vigil i was made the timekeeper of the school in js2 that was the level of the hand of god that was upon my life quarter to five someone would wake me every day without fail quarter to five that was when i started having encounters with this i didn't even know that they were angelic encounters 15 minutes on the dot to five don't tap me i wake up father help this generation in the name of jesus help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit and the power that that realm wields upon this realm all you see is not all there is hallelujah so when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer hmm. the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results hmm. let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results years ago i started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg I traveled to South Africa to meet him and I met him and I told him why I was here. I was not there for, for pilgrimage. I was not there for entertainment. I was there for business. I said, I desire this grace. I desire it. It is a grace. 10,000 crutches cannot be mistaken. No. Many unbelieving members, yet they were also raising crutches. You could see that they didn't have faith. Yet, they would say walk and joke with it. You see, many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace, you will cheaply receive that grace. Listen, when you receive that grace and receive that dimension, many times you will see how cheap it works. Some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering, you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of God is here and it will be as if you are acting drama and even you, you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tithing yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay Lord forgive me now I will start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results 
are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what I shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that God has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when I see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg i'd wanted going to meet robert Lerdan and then charles and francis hunter unfortunately i couldn't meet them i sat down and i listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house i listed them and i searched for the individuals that had those graces like a chef says i need salt where do we buy salt sabo where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles mudok and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of of wisdom that came to my life i saw the wisdom of god at work in their life and i said this foolishness must end i pursued that grace i pursued it with all my heart are we together yes results whoever commands results becomes the leader whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with i submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry they are not guesswork there is an exact knowledge that is back of them they will continue to be reproduced again and again when there is increase when there is the outstretched hand of god when there is favor there is prosperity when there is passion and hunger for god these are results please do not join the people who ignore results i'm wrapping up i know the rain is done but just just be patient make sure as they are coming out they are still listening please you are going to pray for results. listen to me i told myself god there is no need to be in ministry if i'm not producing results that you bear fruits and that your fruits abide much fruits some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that god is here you met him it's called results the next time you come you will not come alone let me tell you empty pews are proof of lack of results it's an uncomfortable truth 
but it is true are we together in fact empty anything emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you i knew i saw the way pastors used to raise money now please i'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of god and the body of christ but i saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money i saw the way pastors birthday pastor I'm, i said no this is not bible but then i asked myself a question how will you eat and how will the ministry thrive and then i said i have to go to the word of god and find out and then i found out that god can open a door for a man that no man can shut i found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of god let me show you one of the most recent scripture i found first corinthians 29 12 i apologize we're wrapping up first first chronicles 29 12 first chronicles 29 12 i saw this scripture in my dream i was sleeping and this scripture came and i woke up and i saw it and i rejoiced i said that means god is shifting me to another dimension both riches and what honor come from you you reign over all of them it's a dangerous scripture both riches and honor come from thee you reign over all and in thy hand is power and might look at all the things we need in one verse riches honor power might greatness strength god is the owner i saw it in my dream i went to sleep oh, and i saw that scripture i got up and i searched it i said this is this if this scripture were a clot it would have faded by now i've prayed this scripture into my life see i stepped into the grace for favor when i prayed for favor for one month that was my prayer request not for a selfish reason lord a man can carry favor bodily let me be an example of it do you know many times when i pray these things is so that i will bring it and you will receive it's not so much for myself when i received the grace for long life it, it was with speed the day i was coming for koinonia it was as if i was going for my wedding reception give me chance let me stand these people were singing and i couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that i'll climb up i came with a grace that i did not have the grace for long life you can carry graces like a fisherman when you catch something and you push your hook you draw it force it out when you see what it is this kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry God has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation. It's an honor we receive. He made it so. Results. We're going to pray. We have to wrap up. Listen to me. Koinonia, hear me. My heart is pained if your life does not command results let it first start from your life then we'll start commanding results over territories was it not joshua that told the son to stand results there are results that can shut down a nation in one day a time will come kings will come to seek the counsel of god from us and say what is god saying he said kings will entreat your favor 
when God told me he would give me access to kings and I would speak to kings in this nation I believed him listen it's not pride in two weeks I'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting all of them gathered in one place the International Conference Center and I will be speaking to them the counsel of God when God says it I believe it listen it, this thing is not it's not it's not about a man I hope you understand what I'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit I'm tired of green leaves Lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results Please pray. You reign, you reign, hallowed, you reign, you reign. Jesus the grace that will cause you to reproduce every result you see here may that grace rest upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the grace that will bring you into strange dimensions wonder walking dimensions of results may that grace rest upon your life I speak upon your life access to kings may that grace come upon you access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ access to kings in the name of Jesus Christ I have set before you an open door I decree and declare the kind of influence that God can put upon a man influence is not a carnal desire it is so that you can rise to a point where the nations can look up to your life in the name of Jesus the grace that can cause a generation
to look at a man and follow Christ through that man. May that grace rest upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. The grace for strange signs and wonders. Wonders of the spirit. May that grace come upon you now. May that grace rest upon you now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Every man who must honor and recognize what you carry, I speak to them by prophecy in this season and in the name of Jesus in this month of October, I command someone must celebrate your grace. Someone must celebrate what you carry for the sake of his majesty. In the name of Jesus, I compel men to discern the grace upon your life. I compel men to discern the hand of God upon you. I compel men to discern the unction upon you. Father, we thank you for tonight. Let the name of the Lord be praised. Let me pray one prayer concerning favor and your finances please allow me pray it God sees my heart God sees how much I pray for you every time there is a dimension of the blessings of the Lord that I want you to step into and the reason is because it will give you the time to serve him I pray for you in the name of Jesus the wealth that comes by prophecy I speak to your life Carry that grace now. 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 I command your bands to be filled with plenty. I speak wine and oil to your treasury. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor that the saints need to rise to the position of influence that will allow them to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. May the grace for that favor rest upon you. Enter into prepared blessings. Let me pray for you. Multiplied visions and spiritual experiences. Hear me the spiritual blindness that stops your eyes from seeing what God is doing I tear that veil now I decree and declare everywhere you find yourself I compel the people there to look up to you as you look up to Christ listen don't sit back doubting what you are saying. No. Every utterance is backed by the throne. I'm not speaking as a man. When God calls men, he backs them. And that every door you must enter in this season. Because we advance through the entrance of doors. I speak to that door. Let it be open for you now. Let it be open for you now. Indeed, it will be said about us that we are a people that the Lord has helped. Marvelously helped like Uzziah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that our territory will come under the influence of your name and your grace. We will never give an inch of our territory to the reign of darkness and Satan we will stand as watchmen until we see the reality of your power and your glory rest upon our land in the mighty name of Jesus Christ amen and amen our time is gone you are here and you are saying apostle I want to make it right with Jesus 
apologize because of the rain we've had to stretch but you are here and you are saying i need a fresh start with the lord jesus we have just one minute for you please be careful no moving around carelessly so that we can have those who are coming out to come if you're on your way coming here whether you are inside you're outside i like you to boldly or you are saying apostle i really want to rededicate my life to christ i know the implication of this that you have shared please boldly summon the courage take a step of faith as we clap and salute them come and stand right at the altar here while i pray for you god bless you people are coming celebrate them as they come koinonia is this the best you can do those coming from outside please clear the way for them clear the way for them god bless you god bless you koinonia keep clapping let's celebrate them as they come to make jesus lord of their lives genuinely and truthfully apostle i believe jesus can give me a new start you are right come join them join them quickly if you are coming from outside please rush and be careful with the ground because it rains so dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto breka teke le kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.